so guys let's prefer solutions to the So guys, let's prefer solution to experiment M4 of the physics practical. Now to begin, what we are going to do first is to first of all complete our table. Now how do we complete our tables? First of all, we need to find the mean of this value. Now mean means add these two values together. It means you should add this value, which is this value here and this value together and then divide by 2. So we are going to do that for the mean here. So for the first one, we have 47.40 plus 47.44 divided by 2. That will give us 47.42. The next one is 45.78 plus 45.72 divided by 2 which is this gives us 45.75 the next one is 43.78 plus 43.88 divided by 2 which is 43.83 the next one is 41 Point five nine plus forty one point six zero divided by two, which gave us forty one point five nine. Let's take it as that. There we have thirty nine point six two plus thirty nine point seven five. Then this is divided by 2, which will give us 39.68, or let's say 0.69. And then the next one is 37.78 plus 37.82 divided by 2, that will give us 37.8. Eight. The next is 35.87 plus 35.87 divided by 2. Of course, you know this will give us 35.87. Then the next is 33.80 plus 33.72 divided by 2. And that will give us 33.76. Now, all you need to do is you have your values for t1 and t2 add them and then divide them by two as i've done here now the next thing you need now is to find the period of oscillation the period now the period is gotten by dividing the mean by 20. then you now have something here which is period square it means you should square what you have for the period so we are going to square anything we are going to have here are we adding it now so let's go for the first one the first one is 47.42 then we are going to divide it by 20 what did it give to us divide by 20 47.42 divide by 20. this gave us 22.371 then we are going to square this and this gives us 5.62 5.622 now the next one is 45.75 divided by 2 divided by 20 which gave 2.288 then when you square that it's going to give us 5.23 
then we have 43.83 divided by 20 which gave us 2.192 then when you square it it's going to give us 4.8 803 then we have 41.59 divided by 20 which gave us 2.079 then when you square that it's going to give us 4.324 then we have 39.69 divided by 2 divided by 20 rather 1.985 1.985 then when you square that it's going to give us 3.938 then the next one is 37.8 divided by 20 which is 1.8 nine zero then when you square that it's going to give us three point five seven two one then the next one is thirty five point eight seven divided by two divided by twenty we should give one point seven nine Three five, okay, one point seven nine four, because we are taking four significant figures. One point seven nine four, four then square. This will give us three point two one six. Then the next is thirty three point seven six divided by twenty, which gave one point six eight eight squared is 2.849 2.849 so you successfully completed your table now the next thing you need to do now is now to look at the questions that are uh that are in front now the question says from the table plot a graph of h against t square so we are going to use the table to plot a graph now oh now this is our graph node this is how our graph node is not exact but this is how our graph node is now what you are going to do here is on top here you are going to say this is what h as is okay h as is and then here you are going to put 0 comma 0 to show the origin and then here you are going to put what uh t square as is okay let me use another pen so here will be t square as is because you are plotting the graph of h against t square now you are not going to put in your values you are not going to come to your uh your table and look this is h sorry not l now this one has values of 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80. let's first of all title our graph we say a graph a graph of h against t square you must put the title then having written the title the thing is the next thing is the scale you now say scale now in your manual you can decide to say let let one centimeter represent since it's 10 10 units 10 units on the h as is which is y as is and then let the next one now you are going to look at the table that table will tell you what to do now if i were to pick from this one i would say let two centimeter represent or let once uh, two centimeter represent one unit depending on how your graph is okay so we can say let two centimeter represent one unit now two centimeter is two of those buses 
the buses are something like this. Two of those buses represent what? Two centimeter. But if it's not up to, you can say one centimeter. Are we getting it now? So if you are saying two centimeter represent one unit, it means here will be what? One. The next one will be what? Let's two centimeter. First of all, we we'll come here. Represent one unit. Okay. One unit on y axis. Now, if your own is not up to, you can decide to re re reduce it to let one centimeter represent one unit, depending on what you have. So this is one, two. The next one is what? On x axis, rather. The next one is three. Then the next one will be what? Four. The next one will be five. The next will be six, seven, eight. Depending when your x axis is exhausted. Then this other one now, we are now going to start from what we are the values here. We are going to start from 10 to 80. So we can say 1 centimeter represents 10 units. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then you are going to continue a little 9 and what? 10. Now, in this graph, your graphing is something that you're supposed to have learned by now. But let's just teach you how to go about it. Now, you are now coming to the first one and then you are now going to say, when H was 10 cm, T squared was what? 5.66. So, you are going back to your table. 10 cm okay this is not supposed to be one two three four five sorry my bad my bad my bad my bad my bad this is supposed to be 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 hour 100 now when it was 10 centimeter what was t square 5.622 so you are going to come here and say 10 centimeter 5.622 so you trace it down of course you are not supposed to trace in your manual let's say 5.622 is somewhere around here so you mark this point you are not supposed to trace your manual okay you know where it is with your imaginary eye the next one is 20 when it is 20 it is what 5.23 so you come here and say 20 5.23 which is very close to what we have here so let's assume it's at this point 5.23 then the next one is 34.8 30 4.8 30, 30 and then 4.8 so you come here and then tick it the next one is 40 4.32 40 4.32 so you trace it down 4.32 and then take it then the next one is 50 3.9 50 3.9 is very close to 4 so we come here and say let's say this 3.9 50 and 3.9 not 60 Sorry about that. So you come here and then take it at that point. The next one is 60 and 3.6. 60 and 3.6. 3.6 is just like half of 3 and 4. Let's assume just a little bit higher. So let's say these are 60. Then the next one is 70 and then 3.216. 70, 3.2. So come here and say this is 70 and then 3.2 should be somewhere around after 3. Let's assume this is 3.2. Then the next one is 80 and 2.8. 80 and 2.8 so we have this 2.8 is very close to 3 let's assume this is the point 
Now, at this point in time, what do you do? You now take your ruler and then rule a straight line, okay? Let's rule a straight line and see where it passes through. Now, these where our values pass through. Now, if you are ruling, please make sure you rule down, okay? Make sure you rule down. So, this graph is a negative graph, okay? The graph is a negative graph. Now, I believe the next thing you'll be asked to is, say, transform the equation t is equals to 2 pi root of h minus h minus h over g so that h becomes the subject of the formula. So, what we are going to do is come to our worksheet and then transform that equation. The equation is what? t is equals to 2 pi root of h minus h all over our g. I believe that is the equation. Okay, that is it. So, transform it and make a subject of the formula. So, how do we make a subject of the formula? What do you do? You say t square is equals to 4 pi square times y. You first of all write square both sides. Okay? Square both sides. Okay? So, t square will be equals to what? 4 pi square times L or times if square cancels that it gives us this something like this so at the end of the day what are we going to have we are going to have t square is equal to use 4 pi square to open through it become 4 pi square h because 4 pi square times this h gives us 4 pi square h minus what 4 pi square small letter h all over g now at this point in time, what do we do? Say this is t squared g is equals to you cross multiply, okay? This g multiply this t squared g is equals to 4 pi square h minus 4 pi square h. Of course, what you are looking for is this small letter h. So you can take this one to this side. So this gives us t square g minus 4 pi square h is equal to or let's make this easier by taking this one to this side and then taking this one to this side if you take this one to this side it becomes positive which is what 4 pi square h is equals to there you have this 4 pi square h minus t square g okay now at this point in time what do you do <clears throat> you now have 4 pi square h is equals to 4 pi square h minus t square g. Now, to find h, divide both sides by 4 pi square. Divide both sides by 4 pi square. h cancel, 4 pi square cancel 4 pi square. Our h will be what? 4 pi square h minus t square g all over 4 pi square. Now, at this point in time, this 4 pi square, you can spread it in between. So, this gives us h is equals to 4 pi square h divided by 4 pi square minus t square g divided by 4 pi square. 4 pi square cancel 4 pi square h is what? Capital letter h minus t square g all over 4 pi square. Now, you are going to arrange this. So, our h is equal to minus t square g all over 4 pi square plus small letter plus this capital letter h. Where this h now is our intercept. Okay? Now, our intercept. Now, at this point in time, the in questions now say the measured value or say write down the measured slope of the graph. So, the slope. We can take two values from the graph to get our slope, okay? Two values or two points that entered. Let's take this point as one part of the slope. It's a straight line you are going to rule. I can't rule a straight line with this. But then, it's going to be something like this. It's going to be something like this. Then you rule it down like this. This will be your slope. Take your ruler, rule it down. Now, to calculate for the slope, you are not to write it here, but I just want to write it here so that we will not go to another place. Now, to calculate for the slope, is changing h 
all over change in t square. So our slope now will be equals to where is our change in h? The difference between the first one and the second one. Now the first one here is what 60. So this one gives us 60 minus the last one here is what 10 divided by <coughs> divided by now this other one you have here is i think uh, the value here was uh, around 5.6 something so we can say 5.6 but then this is not our highest our highest was 60 this will give you a negative slope so that value here the other time i think it was uh, value for 60 from the, your graph was what 3.5 which is 3.6 so you can say this is 3.6 minus this value here is what for 10 value for 10 is for 10 is 5.6 so it becomes 3.6 minus 5.6 now what will be your slope your slope will be 60 minus 10 is what uh 50 divided by 3.6 minus 5.6 what is it going to give to us 3.6 minus 5.6 i think it will give us minus 2 50 divided by minus 2 is what minus 25 okay so our slope is minus 25 we are now coming here so you write down the measured value of the slope so the slope is minus 25 now you must write down the unit too this is h h is height and i believe it was measured in centimeters okay from your table we measure the centimeter and time is what second so you now come here and say this is minus 25 centimeter per what second square now the measured value of the h intercept what is the value of the h intercept does it intercept at h now before we answer the measured value of the h intercept first of all let us um there's a particular thing that we skipped here which is hence the slope of the graph of h against t square is now the slope is gotten from what we deduce the slope is from here from our equation of straight line y is equals to what ms plus c our slope is if x is t square it means our slope is what minus g all over 4 pi square so our m is minus g all over 4 pi square so this gives us minus g sorry this is not supposed to be here this is minus g all over 4 pi square is what you ought to write here okay now this graph is in such a way that you are supposed to leave some space the way you rule it matters a lot it will go up which is like 100 here will be like um 110 then it continues like that 120 then 130 let's assume the value here is what 150 so when you are ruling your graph rule it in such a way that there will be space enough are you getting it to have your what your values your intercept so your h intercept let us take it as 150 assumption i'm not saying it's correct an assumption so the h intercept is what 150 so the major value of the h intercept in this case is 150 but you also give you a value within this range anyway but i'm just taking it as 150. now the value of g deducted from the graph how do we calculate the value of g deducted from the graph now we said m is what minus g all over 4 pi square we said that m is minus g all over 4 pi square so we can come here and say m which is the slope is minus g all over 4 pi square now what would be your slope your slope would be equal to minus g all over 4 pi square now the slope was 25 centimeters calculated so to calculate for g we can say m is minus g all over 4 pi square this over 1 cross multiply minus g would be equals to what 4 pi square m divide both sides by minus so this cancel this your g 
is what minus 4 pi square m all over okay minus 4 pi square m now of course we know our slope is minus 25 so our g now will be equals to minus 4 times pi is what 3.142 square times m m is minus 25 and finally g would be equal to what will be our value for g g would be equal to minus 4 times 3.142 squared times minus 25 and that gave us 987.21 okay centimeter per second square so our gina is 987.21 centimeter per second square now if you want to divide you divide by whatever you have by 100 our g will be equal to 9.872 meter per second square so convert from centimeter square to meter per second you divide you multiply by what by divide by 100 rather okay like i'm very very tired well let me try so that's our value for g you are now going to come back and say our g the major value for the value of g the dotted from the graph our g is what is 9 point or let's say 9872 987.2 centimeter per second square or 9.87 meter per second square now the standard error in g how do you calculate for standard error now you calculate from standard error by using the formula standard error is what standard error is four w all over n arrow okay four w all over n arrow we had w is called the vertical scatter w is called what vertical scatter and then our n is the number of points in your graph number of points in your graph arrow is the horizontal range now how do you determine your vertical scatter i've said this before that the vertical scatter what you do is look at the values that we are giving to your graph now the point that is farther away from the line which is your slope you take a line take a your ruler and rule that point in this case that is the point that is farther away if there are no much point there just like that then on this side also there we are supposed to be point but since it's not there we leave it like that now what you now do is take your ruler and measure this value now let us assume the value here is 0 0.4 if you take your ruler and measure here like this 0 0.4 your vertical scatter now is what 0 0.4 okay so vertical scatter w is 0 0.4 so we have 4 times 0 0.4 divided by the number of points in your graph how many point number of points can be got to from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so that's the number of points in your graph which is 8 points so our n is 8 now the next thing is the range now the range you can get it from also your table which is your horizontal range now the horizontal range is the difference between the first value on the x axis and the last now the first value here is what first value is 5.622 and the last value is what 2.849 so you are going to come here and say Five point eight six two. Five point eight six two minus. What is the last one there? Sorry about that. Five point six two two rather minus two point eight four nine. <laughs> now our standard error now will be equal to. Use 4 to multiply that 4 times 
let's just do everything together 4 times 0 0.4 divided by 8 times 5.622 5.622 minus 2.849 and this will give us 0.072 which is approximately 0.1 so this is our standard error you now come back to your graph again and see standard error you come back to your tip this part 7 standard error is what 0.072 now note that everything that i've been solving like all these ones are supposed to be on your worksheet even this one all are supposed to be on your what on your worksheet so that is basically what you do for this graph and i believe the end they say the what does the h intercept represent h intercept represent the height of the ceiling height of ceiling now explain why the graph does not pass through the origin the graph did not pass through the origin because it is a what a negative graph state two sources of error and precaution you took to minimize them you have to look for somewhere and copy this one look for your mates and copy from okay so that is that for this experiment that's how to go about this experiment okay so having done this one now every other thing that you are going to do it still follows this procedure so you don't really need much guide on the physics manual just look at what i did here and then from there time to time try and do the other one yourself if you need any assistance please you can always come to my dm thank you